Hi Ninja Nerds, in this video we're going to be talking about Abruptio Placente. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe and then check out ninjanerd.org where we have all of our notes and illustrations for you guys to follow along for all these lectures. So Abruptio Placente, I love saying it, sounds like a Harry Potter spell, but it is not something that we uh, hope to ever run into or have our patients have as well. So Abruptio Placente is when there is a premature detachment of the placenta from the uterine wall. What does that mean? That means that our placenta, our most vital pregnancy organ that is able to give baby nutrients and blood supply and then take out waste from baby is corrupted or ruptured or ripped off from the uterine wall. And because of that, we are now having a uh, you know life support of the baby basically chopped right off, not, not able to do anything that it needs to do. And that's a problem because we need to then get baby out very, very quickly. So how does this happen? What is it? What is going on? Let's talk about it. So we have three uterus right here, uteri, uterus, uteruses. Uh, we have three of them right here, drawn up for you guys with placentas in each. And I just want you to understand really quickly what's going on. We know that within placenta, there is a adherence to the uterine, uterine wall. So the uterus is in purple here, and we have our pink uh, placenta. And when we have this separation, we can cause some micro bleeding. So, the first is there can be a marginal, which is some type of tear just along the outside, um, and that tear can actually cause a lot of issues because it's not going to re-adhere. We can also have partial, which is where there is all of it to one side, or there is a complete, and complete looks like this. Okay, so I'm marking it in this dark brown and red because the there we go, lab marker. Because of this uh, type of bleeding, the blood is not bright red, but instead a browny, dark maroon color. Okay, and when we have these problems with our placenta, what we're looking at here is problems with baby getting what it needs. So how does this happen? There's a lots of different ways that this can occur. Most commonly is if the patient has hypertension, if they are diagnosed with some type of preeclampsia or anything like that, it can just be that microcirculation is not able, because of that constriction, is not able to uh, perfuse anymore, so we're gonna have problems getting some type of circulation to baby. Uh, there's also, off of that, all that microvasculature being constricted by cocaine or smoking. If you have multiples, so we have multiple babies within there, we can have an issue because maybe some aren't able to adhere as uterus stretches and placenta grows. We're running out of surface area there for all of our placenta, placentas to adhere. The advanced maternal age, again, over the age of 35 is considered advanced maternal age. Any type of abdominal trauma, so if our patient's in some type of um, motor vehicle crash, if they uh, fall and fall on belly, if they do anything else that is some type of trauma to the belly, then we can have a, um, abrupto placentae. We can also have premature rupture of membranes, and then also a history of abruption can cause all types of abruptio placentae. And why is that? What's going on? Those signs and symptoms of this, because it is traumatic and severe, I always think of abruptio placentae as like the really, really bad one because it's gonna be abrupt, it's fast, it's sudden, severe pain, and all of a sudden it's this dark red vaginal bleeding. So why is it? Why is it this dark red? Well, if we look up here with the concealed, what's happening is that tearing is happening within an area that's not even actually bleeding. Um, and what I mean by it, it's bleeding, but it's concealed within the center. And I know in the last video I talked about scabs, it's kind of the same thing here as when you have a scab or something was on your body, when it heals, it heals from outside in. So if you were ever to rip the scab off, the bleeding would occur in the middle, but not on the outside around the perimeter. Uh, and with a concealed, it's very similar where that trauma causes the bleeding within the middle of the placenta, but because it's sealed or like a suction cup all the way around, the bleeding's happening in here, but because that perimeter is holding on, right, and it's holding on and concealing that blood, we don't really know that mom is having an abrupt placenta because we're not getting that bleeding. But there will be some other indicators like fetal stress and things like that. When we have a partial, what happens is some of that bleeding is happening deep within the placenta and it starts to leak out, but because it is Accumulating it is a lot darker. It takes a longer time for it to potentially come out through the vagina. We also have a rigid uterus. It's very board-like. So again, 
It's when you palpate and assess uterus, you're going to feel some hard spots. You're going to feel something that is not normal. It's not soft and nice as the uterus should be. All of a sudden, it's really rigid and board-like. We also have the abnormal fetal, fetal heart rate pattern. So again, like I said, the concealed, we may not see any issues outwardly from mom, but when we assess baby, we start to see some concerning results. The uterine tachycystole, and then we also have abruption, which can cause to the fetal demise and the maternal hypovolemia because we're having that, dis sorry, distress and then possibly demise. When we have that placenta ripping off, baby is gonna start to have lack of nutrients, lack of oxygen, lack of uh, blood supply. And because of that, baby starts to get distressed. Also, because we're having that pooling away from the uterine wall, we're having that bleeding, now we're having an issue with mom because mom's body is starting to realize there is a bleeding, a bleed happening somewhere and we need to start working on that. But because of this being something that we may not know right away, if it is a, an abruption that is not with a trauma, so mom's not really thinking about it, then we can also move into, uh-oh, we need to take care of mom and we need to take care of baby pretty quickly. So let's go in and talk about the treatment and the nursing interventions for abrupt deal placentae. All right, engineers, so now we're gonna move into how we're gonna take care of our patient that possibly has abrupt deal placentae. Remember, our patient's coming in, they're having some, a lot of pain, they're having a lot of a rigidity, they may have be dark, um, bl uh, dark brown or red bleeding that's apparent, and they're having possibly contractions, they're having some of that tachycystole within the uterus, so they're feeling this painful contractions. What's going on? So because this is an emergency, we wanna start doing things really quickly for baby and quickly for mom. So right away, we're gonna get some blood work. We're gonna get a CBC, the coagulation factors, because they are having a presence of bleeding. The CBC is to check the hemoglobin hematocrit levels, the type and screen to make sure that we know the type of blood and the RH factor that we need to give mom, as well as the klein howard Beck test, which is, again, will be checked for fetal um, blood circulation within mom's circulation. So we wanna make sure there's no fetal blood within mom's or maternal circulation. And then we also wanna make sure baby's doing okay, so we're gonna do an ultrasound of the fetal well-being and also a placental assessment when we do that ultrasound. And then we can possibly put mom on the TOCO to make sure we're getting those contractions if she is having some, and also the fetal heart rate monitor to make sure baby's doing okay. So what's going on? We're gonna be checking out baby, we're gonna be checking out mom, and we are gonna be doing nursing interventions pertaining to this situation. Because every placenta, um, abruptio placentae, or every placenta placement and every trauma to a placenta is different per patient. So again, it's always that patient-centered care. What's going on for this patient in this particular time in this particular motion, moment? So we wanna make sure that we're palpating the uterus for any tenderness and tone, making sure we're finding any type of issues and we're keeping an eye on it. We're also gonna be looking at the fetal heart rate pattern because baby is possibly under distress. And there can be those marginal or partial tears that are okay, baby's doing okay, mom's doing okay, and then two weeks later, now we're having a lot of other issues, mom's starting with contractions. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we're keeping baby safe and keeping mom safe. So there may be a point where that bleeding gets so bad that we're gonna have to start doing pad counts. Usually at that point is when we are starting to think about the immediate birth management. Baby's coming, baby is ready, baby is moving, baby is a facing, uh, and we're gonna have to try to think about delivery. We also want to start thinking about when mom is getting ready for delivery as well as having these issues with the bleeding and the uh, abruptio placentae, the, the pulling away from the uterine wall. We're going to have to be doing some things and what we want to do is make sure we have IV access to give them IV fluids and blood products if needed. We're going to be administering that oxygen 8 to 10 liters via face mask in order to make sure that mom is doing okay and again, the placenta is now not on the uterine wall as, as it once was adhered. It's pulling off maybe partially or more. So then that's decreasing oxygen to baby. So what we wanna do is give mom a little more oxygen in order to push more oxygen to baby. We also wanna make sure we're monitoring the maternal vital signs as well as continuously monitoring the fetal monitor signs as well. So we wanna make sure that that fetal monitor is on, keeping an eye on baby. We wanna assess the urinary output and fluid balances because if we're giving these fluids and those blood products, we don't wanna overdo it and have another situation while we are also having an abrupt placenta. And then we also wanna uh, keep you know, mom calm, make sure where she's laying on her left side. Uh, again, this is 
this is always patient-centered, so some moms won't be able to lay that way. Just make sure we get mom and baby in the safest position as possible to give us the best outcome. Because remember, the placenta is the baby's life source. It is the baby's uh, way of getting rid of waste, getting that oxygen, getting that nutrients. And when that is corrupted in some way, then we have some other issues that possibly are not gonna be a great outcome. So we wanna move fast, we wanna make sure it's an emergency that we're moving fast and getting ready to possibly deliver baby and keep mom and baby safe. So I hope this video made sense. I hope you like it. And as always, Ninja Nerds, until next time. Thank you.